<laughs> Hi, I'm Chris George. I know Rob Long through improv and, and in Bakersfield. And Rob came out to visit Boston. I happen to live here now. And he's here videotaping me. I didn't even have to ask the questions. He just answered them. Rob gave me the questions in advance. I've studied. <laughs> yeah, we're on the Boston subway system. We are on the Boston subway system. So as you've already covered who you are and how we know each other. Um, so question three is react to the trip. You're aware of the trip that I'm on? And the trip's a lot of fun. Okay. Um, it's really, I really enjoy showing people around Boston. Rob and I have a connection around improv, so I took him to improv tonight. Rob really enjoyed pointing out a little things that they could have done better. And um, Thanks. I'm such a jerk. <laughs> He had some very cogent remarks, and uh, uh, and now we're just heading home. I'm getting on a plane to Toronto and then Vancouver tomorrow. And right. Going to Alaska, uh, so that's on my mind now. Rob's going to stay for another five days, I think, and uh, not five days. Okay. No, I'm leaving Saturday. All right. Rob's going to stay here and soak up as much Boston <laughs> as he can. Um, he's, uh, and uh, it's been. Really good to have him around. Hope we get around here another time. Show him my house in North Hando, which my wife and I are very proud of. Yeah, I'm sorry I missed that. Yeah. And um, anyway, it's good to see an old friend. Is that all you want to say? That's all I want to say. <laughs> all right, so what do I need to see in Boston that I haven't seen yet? Um, there's a lot of history here. You're not going to see it all in two days. Well, I'm on a historical tour on Saturday. That's probably as good as it's going to get. Yeah. The JFK Museum is really nice. Um, it's summertime, so I feel like going out on a whale watching tour in the in the ocean would be really fun to do. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, it's going to be hot as hell. Yeah, this uh, with like 90 percent humidity. That's going to kill you. Yeah. So go slow. Try not to drink too much because humidity amplifies all that. And uh, no, it would really mess you up. Like, you know, wind up taking home the wrong man. And um, <laughs> that's, you know, you're going to have to correct that. So that's from tonight. Yeah, and so, anyway, uh, there's a lot to do, um, yeah. but the next two days, take it easy. So, you said I observed uh, my observations on the improv show we went, did we identify which one it was? I don't know if we should. Uh, improv, I'm sorry, no? it was uh, Improv Asylum okay. in the North End. <laughs> so much for letting them be anonymous. <laughs> um, so, so am, am I a jerk for, for what I had to say? No, you're an English teacher. Right. So that makes me a jerk. No. I said specifically you were not a jerk. You're an English teacher. There's a difference. English teachers breaking things down to improve them. The oh. jerk is just breaking things down because he's so short he can't stand over and he can't see over anything. Okay. So you're saying my deconstruction of what I saw, perfectly normal, perfectly natural. As long as I've known you. So you, you tell me about... Your enjoy your reaction to the show we saw. I laughed more than he did. Right. Um, that's also not surprising. <laughs> um, it seems like they relied a little too much on sketch and not enough on improv. And they don't seem to have enough confidence in either their ability to communicate an improv or their audience's ability to give them all time to communicate an improv. Okay. Um, and they need to work on that. I don't think the format they're in doing shows like that is going to help them work on it. They need to okay. find a different format to, to, to work that out, maybe bring it back to the show. Right. Yeah, so our they also need to give themselves more than two minutes a scene. Right. Like, there, there was a hard time limit and they... Have a crutch for that, and and, and it, it keeps them from developing things too much. But that didn't, and none of that bothered you. 
No, it did. You still enjoyed the show. I did enjoy the show. I'm not going to let stuff like that get between me and enjoying the show. How do you do that? Um, by appreciating what they are giving out. Okay. They're funny on the one-liner. Yeah. Well, they're good with the one-liners. Um, and they're good... Uh, and they do this odd mixture of sketch and improv where they have the song mostly thought out, but they bring in material from other other places to sort of enhance it. Okay. And that was at least interesting. You didn't quite know what was going to happen next. Uh, and some of the sketch stuff was funny, but I'm, you know, you don't want to come back to see the sketch stuff because you've seen it all. Because you've seen it, right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, the, 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 they could do some one-liners and some timing stuff. Watching a couple of audience members become victims is always fun. Um, and, um, and that happened more than once. But like my favorite part of the show is when they adopted characters and started actually acting. Um, and they didn't do that enough. Okay. So for most of my career, I've struggled with the balance between uh, commercial marketability and artistic value. And it seemed like, I mean, the room was full, and the audience was laughing through the entire show. Yeah, the audience was into it. So they definitely succeeded on a commercial level and on some artistic level. It's just not my type of show. I'm looking for deeper characterization, longer narrative. That kind of, and that's just not the kind of show they were doing. No. So. No, they get one or two laughs, and that's about where they wanted to go, and then right. it's over. Okay. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I, I, there's a whole lot of you put out there, like the as long as you've known me thing, because it's a balance that leads me to hyper criticism, which comes off negative. And I know that my goal is to improve what it is I'm working with and working on. And when I watch stuff, I'm always looking for its best form, or in Pokemon terms, its final evolution. But I don't know if that interferes with my ability to enjoy what I'm watching. Can you react to that? Yeah, I, I don't know whether it was I was raised by critical people and criticism always seemed like love to me. Okay. Or that I just feel like when you think about things, it's impossible to not notice things that you wish were better. Um, like, there's no perfection out there. There's no... Everything can be improved. Uh, maybe that's the engineer in me. Um, but like, criticism doesn't bother me. It doesn't seem negative. What seems negative to me, if you just tell somebody to shut up or tell somebody they're a bunch of idiots, and you don't put out what you didn't like and what you thought they could do better, or you just announce that you're offended and walk out. <laughs> um, like That's not helpful or interesting at all to me. Um, and um, but, but well thought out criticism, even if I disagree with it, I'm going to give it a minute. That's, maybe that's more of a personal thing than anything else, but um, it's always something I've appreciated about Rob. They said he thinks about things and he gives sort of fact-based opinions to the best of his ability. Okay. Do you struggle with perfectionism? Um, this is my favorite audio of every of any video I've shot. Train on it. This is the Harvard stop on the red line, by the way. I'm always trying to make things better. Okay. But I don't have an obsessive compulsive streak that I've noticed in some people. Okay. Where they're just banging on it until they're bloody. If I can't, in a reasonable amount of time, imagine a way forward, I look for another way. Um, and I, I don't, you know, repeat things that have failed very much. Uh, so in that sense, I'm not a perfectionist. In, and every once in a while, I get that you have to deliver on a deadline or you just have to deliver something, and it's not going to be perfect. Um, my favorite thing I ever said about that is if you, aim for, you're never, if you aim for perfect, you're never going to get it. But you could catch excellence. And um, 
So, aiming to make things better, trying to improve things as hard as you can, to make things excellent. And expecting to make things perfect is a, is a fool's errand. How do you let go of that? Of that expectation? Um, that's a great question. I think it just happens when I get interested in something else, when my attention goes somewhere else. And, um, and I make a decision. I'm more interested in this than I am. Frequently, it's when I think that the improvements that I can make are of a micro nature, not a macro nature. Okay. Um, if, if the improvements I can make are so small that they don't seem to make a substantial difference in whatever I'm doing, that's when I know I've got to the point where maybe somebody else needs to give it a shot. So when the effort of the improvement outweighs the return on the improvement, is that fair? It's fair. It's not exactly how I see it. Okay. But that's a, that, um, I would say that, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, that's really fair, actually. Uh, that's pretty close to how I see it. Cool. I know we're coming up on our stop. Is there anything you want to add as we wrap it up? Thanks for coming out and visit. I hope you come again. I hope I get to visit you rather than you play. My pleasure. I'd love to come out again. Huh? I'd love to come out again. Great. Say goodnight, Chris. Goodnight, Chris. Yes!